Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dishonored. He's alive. Thank you, Corvo, thank you. My uncle's a good man, and one day he'll prove it. Here. I know you did this for the right reasons, but I want you to take this as a reward. It's an old heirloom one of my aunts gave me. And now we're just gonna pawn this sentimental heirloom off for a little bit of money. Thank you. It's actually so cynical <laughs> that that happens that way. You know that. Yes. Hopefully the high overseer is the first step along that path. And we must find a girl. Emma. Are advised to remain indoors Who knows what her mind is like being there when her mother was killed. I'd imagine the daughter of an empress is tougher than you think. Hmm. Quite right. In any case, we won't get the Lord Regent until we weaken his base. All the pieces are in play. He controls the city watch. Through Campbell, he had the religious faction. Someone is funding the military. And he currently has a majority in Parliament. Yes, I'm aware of that. My brothers control the voting bloc for my family. I'm very much aware of that. So we're going to dismantle the regime change piece by piece. First Such religious, then military, and then Parliament. Old songs, linging arms. But that was, that was from a happier time. time. Samuel Beechworth went to sea to forget all of his life. always wanted me to be an overseer. If he could see us now. The boatman has a good heart and respects you. Samuel is a simple man, but he knows the right of Avon and all its tributaries. Even as a faithful man, down to the smallest inlet. He has many scars, some from the phlegm of the river crests, some. Some nights, I'm glad I just passed the boat. Samuel was once eager to hear Havelock's stories of the sea. But perhaps the Admiral is not what he expected. Samuel Beechworth went to sea to forget a hopeless life. He succeeded. Sailors tell tales of monsters far out to sea. But I'll tell you, there's strange things in this river no one talks about. Lights in the water, late at night. I've seen faces, too. The thing about the heart is, I'm not sure if it's a good storytelling device. Because it really breaks the show-don't-tell rule. Like, we were just told he is a good heart and that he respects us. We were never really shown it. Spank the high overseer in his own house. I hope the tools I designed for you function to your satisfaction. The fact that I am standing here and talking to you confirms that this is true in several ways. Can I be of service to you? We're going to see if he has any upgrades for us. It might not just yet, but we can still buy some things, including a really cheap rune. And we can even replenish our supply of sleep bolts, even though we're almost maxed out. We could definitely get some more rewiring tools they are going to come in handy more and more especially once we encounter some arc pylons. But even with the walls of light, those can be handy. And just sleep darts are one of the most handy things you can have. And with that rune that we picked up, we can get a new ability, Possession. At level one, for three runes, we can possess animals. And that merges our body with theirs. Uh, our soul in their body. And so, they can become our vehicles. Uh, we can possess rats and move through really tight, small spaces, and it opens up so many more avenues in the level design. You did it. Somehow you took down the High Overseer Campbell against the odds. I knew you were our man, Corvo. With Campbell gone, we've hurt the Lord Regent immeasurably. And with Martin back, we'll have the finest strategist alive. The Lord Regent must be shitting himself in Dunwall Tower. Yes. And Campbell's journal, let's not forget. Our hope is that in these encoded pages, the location and condition of Emily Caldwin can be discovered. Our entire movement will mean nothing if we can't place the rightful heir on the throne. We must act fast. No doubt the Lord Regent is holding Emily somewhere, waiting to reveal her, to step out as the hero and further cement his regency. If he doesn't bring the young lady forth soon, there will be infighting among the nobles as to who should succeed the Empress. 
Yes, time is against us. But now you should take a well-earned rest, Corvo. We will decipher the contents of the High Overseer's journal and share them with you later. We got that journal uh, off of High Overseer Campbell, who we branded a heretic last time. So our next order of business is going to be rescuing Emily on top of the dismantling of this regime that came with the coup d'etat. It is every citizen's duty to report treasonous speech and actions. By the way, at level two, I want to make sure this works. I can break into skylights like this. Okay, good. Um, at level two of possession, when we upgrade it for the price of five runes, which I'm going to be gunning for... We can possess humans. Ten minutes without. Is that so? In any case, you can't dismiss me. I went through the books this morning and found five mistakes you've made. Very well. You're lucky I found them before the Admiral did. I love happening upon these conversations because it shows that the characters in this world have agency. There are things going on when you aren't around, and there are characters doing their own things. It's not not all about Corvo, Corvo, Corvo. Hello, Corvo. I expect Martin will be joining us shortly. I hate to start your day with such a strange matter, but the servants heard something last night, moving through the storm drains beneath the building. Most likely a weeper, the poor bastard. There's no hope for them once the plague gets that far along. Nothing more than a shuffling corpse full of sickness and insects, if you ask me. I'd appreciate you investigating, just to be sure it's not a nosy guardsman that's getting too close. Here's a key to the hatches. I send a servant down there, but they die of fear on the spot, I'm afraid. Maybe Piero can concoct some sort of sleep poison for your crossbow if you want to go that route. So now we're going to get to go down into the sewers in this intermission uh, before our second mission. To investigate what weepers are and to sweeten the deal there are two runes clumped together at one end of the sewer this is a really linear bottleneck section in which we can just collect a few runes for not a very high price oh I cannot wait to get three more after that so I can get the level two possession um, so being able to possess rats and small animals, like fish, <laughs> the utility alone is worth it. Just because you have access to so many more places and with much uh, a much smaller risk of detection. But with humans, oh, it gets really good. It gets real good. Uh, like the walls of light, which would normally vaporize you trying to pass through them. Or arc pylons that would electrocute you. There's a weeper. They're kind of like Left 4 Dead witches, except a little bit less scary. They're still really dangerous, though. I think that might start patrolling now. Hmm. The one in the back is. So we're going to try and blink past them into the water. Um... If we possess a guard, let's say. I'm just gonna wait down here and keep the sleep bolts out just in case. If we possess a gu uh, guard, we can pass by arc pylons that are wired to kill us. We can pass through walls of light without rewiring them. Uh, didn't wanna have to resort to that, and I got paranoid that this one would just turn around if I tried to sneak up to choke him out. So, easy peasy, at the, at the cost of uh, two crossbow bolts, two sleep darts. Sorry, but I won't be here for the next meeting, or ever again for that matter. What happened here was unnatural and makes me sick to recall. I left the result of our labors here for you to keep, but I expect that the rats will consume it before you return. Goodbye. I just want that rune in there. A tasty rune. To get me one step closer to that level 2 uh, possession. Yeah, 
And if I'm remembering, the other quirk about possessing humans is that once you exit the possession, uh, the target will die. Which is being able to use... Uh, am I remembering that right, or are they just stunned? I guess we'll find out. Is there a point in coming over here? Ah, uh, yeah, there's an exit hatch. You went down there in the sewers? I thought I heard a weeper in there earlier. You're probably the bravest man I've ever met. Overseer Martin has arrived. He's with Admiral... I want to talk to you. We'll now be encountering a lot more weepers on our travels, Horrible. along with the rats. I trust you remember Martin, an overseer before, and perhaps again someday soon. I owe you thanks for my rescue. Indeed. You've given us a glimmer of hope, Corvo. Because we've gotten what we've wanted from Campbell's journey. You've done it. We know where Emily Caldwin is being held. The Golden Cat, of all places. A bathhouse for aristocrats. Little better than a cursed brothel. But there's an unfortunate twist. It appears that Pendleton's own kinsmen stand in our way. The twins, Morgan and Custis. Not only are they controlling Emily, but they have the controlling parliamentary votes we so desperately need. Yes, the Pendletons have to die. But most importantly, Emily must be brought here safely so we can protect her until the Lord Regent and his entourage have been dealt with. Pendleton's waiting for you on the dock. He's asked to brief you personally. I think it's best. Let's use the heart again on Pendleton, because we don't know too much about him to other than he's a snotty aristocrat. Lord Pendleton is the son of nobility. The one so steeped in courtly manners. His thoughts do name on revenge and murder. So he's got a real we dark streak. Jealous little Trevor, always in the shadow. He is prone to skin infections. His eyes are sensitive to the light. Pendleton's ships come back from the Pandesian continent, crowded with war frightened captives. I think that tells you everything you need to know about this man who we are allied with. Corvo, I've asked to speak to you myself. You see, I'm sending you to kill my older brothers, Morgan and Custis. They're horrible men. It's true, as you may have heard, cruel beyond words. Further, my brothers are close allies to the Lord Regent, and as long as they are in Parliament, we cannot gather the votes we'll need to stop the Lord Regent from further consolidating his power. These days, they're best known for exploiting their favor with him to cheat others out of their wealth. Let's just say that not every family evicted in quarantine for having the plague actually has the plague. I warned my brothers in every way I could. I really did. But they never did listen to me. They'll be at the Golden Cat tonight at their usual revels. They'll be protected by the City Watch, so it'll be dangerous. Now go. Please do it before I change my mind. Strange bedfellows and whatnot. I'll take you to the Golden Cat when you're ready. I've taken Lord Pendleton enough times, believe me. Um, we're ready to move on to our second mission, which is going to be uh, the Pleasure House. And once again, we're going to be going back to the distillery district, revisiting some old locales. I'll get you as close as I can to the Golden Cat, Corvo. You'll have to go the rest of the way on your own. The entrance is near Holger Square. The main thing is to make sure that little girl, Emily, gets back all safe and sure. Them two Pendletons are there, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of guards. Slackjaw might have some ideas on helping you get inside the cat, if he don't kill you. This here's his territory. He and his Bottle Street gang hole up at the old Dunwall Whiskey Factory. They sell the elixir that folks use to fight off the plague. I'll lay low, but keep an eye out for you and the little lady you bring him back. Good luck to you. I know Emily must mean a lot to you. Be careful going up the street, Corvo. 
A river hand I know pulled up alongside me last night and said there's one of those watchtowers on cloud right now. I guess you're getting rid of Campbell shook up the Lord. So that new watchtower is going to be a problem for us. Oh, and Chaos. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Chaos. As I've said before, Dishonored doesn't have a Paragon and Renegade-style morality system. Instead, your actions can create chaos. Uh, certain objectives can raise chaos too, like if we had poisoned the distillery for Granny Rags. Other ones, though, they can act as a counterbalance. The Overseer and his sister Elsa that we saved, uh, Kurnow who we saved, those decreased our chaos rating. Uh, but it's mainly about killing or not killing people. Also being spotted and causing alarms. Generally, the more you kill and the louder you go, the higher the chaos gets, ranging from low to medium to high. So between missions, you get the report of what your chaos at, which affects the world state going forward. So if you start a mission at medium or high chaos, you encounter way more weepers, way more rats, and there are more guards because the logic is that the guards are more paranoid. So there are more of them. So if you take the easy way out of just going loud and murdering everything, the game gets harder in response. At least that's how I think they intended it. You also get secondary effects like characters reacting in different ways uh, and different endings. The story also changes a little bit in reaction to your actions. Actually, I'm blink behind here. Attention, Dunwall citizens. Thaddeus Campbell. Formerly High Overseer, is no longer a citizen of Dunwall. He now bears the Heretics brand, and by one of the oldest traditions of the Abbey of the Everyman, it is now a minor criminal offense to offer this man aid or housing. In this time of spiritual crisis, the Overseers have Slack initiated jaw. the Feast of Slack Painted jaw. Heavens until a new High anyway. Overseer is chosen. And I think that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. We will finish this mission off next time. Don't tell me to Take move it along. easy. Have a good one, everyone.